Hey guys, Nick Stockwood with Demonic Procedures here with another tutorial for the UDK. And we're picking up where we left off with our room with a little tiny box inside of it. So we're going to talk about adding textures in the content browser, which is new. We used to have the generic browser, and now we have the content browser. It's basically the same thing, just a little fancier. Um, and we access that by clicking here at the Open Content Browser button. It's right next to the binoculars and right next to the K for Kismet, which we'll be talking about later. Not in this tutorial, though, because that's a little bit longer down the lines. Let's open up the content browser. And if we click this, we have this huge thing with all this other stuff in it. Wow. Well, the first thing we're going to talk about is navigating this a little bit. And over here, you'll see your packages. Let me just make this smaller, get some good space here, be kind of creative with my space. So we have our packages here. And a package basically holds everything that you're going to be using within the game. So if I go down to UDK and then I go down to content, I have characters, effects, environments, gameplay, maps, textures, and all this other crazy cool stuff. So well, actually, let me go to the engine. I might have to actually load some stuff in. Oh, environments. That's where I want to go. Sorry about that. I had a brain fart, guys. It happens to the best of us. Go to the UT game, content, and we'll go to environments environments and now we have a bunch of environments that we can check out um, we have ASC's HU which I think stands for human LT I'm not, I forgot what that one stands for and neck stands for necrosis uh, UN I can't remember I think that's just basic random stuff like liquid and trees and terrain and um, simple shaders and simple meshes and stuff like that uh, we're gonna start something simple we'll go with HU um, Let's actually start with ASC. ASC floor. We'll go to ASC floor. And up here we have object type. And we're just going to look for. Oh, I can't even see. We'll just look for materials here. Where it says materials, I just have the checkbox. And we're just going to look for material as well. This package has three materials it has kind of a rocky floor. And it has these other materials which look like they're used for static meshes that we'll talk about later. Um, let's see here. Let's find something good. That we can start adding here. Okay, fine. We'll go with the HU. Uh, blah. I'm trying to find something here that just I like. Let me fully load this. I might have some better stuff. Nothing to show. Nothing to show. Mostly static meshes here. Alright, we'll stick with this one. That'll be fine. We're going to stick with the ASC floors. Uh, this comes generically with the uh, UDK. We'll select the we like this. I'll go with this weird floor material. So let's talk about adding a. Well, that was loud. Let's talk about adding a texture. Uh, to add a texture, I'll select the floor in the room, and you'll be able to see that because it highlighted up. And then I can click and drag. Actually, I can just probably click and drag and move it over. So I left clicked, held down, and dragged it over. And now you can see I have a texture to my floor. Yay! Aren't I amazing? I am just so awesome. Let's go down to HU Walls, and we'll add some other textures here. We'll add something to the walls. Um, go, we'll just kind of slap this weird random wall texture on everything here. Might come in a little bit blurry at first, but it'll fix itself. So basically all I'm doing is I'm selecting the texture, I'm dragging and dropping into this room here. Um, all you have to do really is make sure it says material, and you can just put it on anything you want, really. It's... Uh, pretty easy it's nothing too crazy there are better ways to do this I'm doing this the most simplest way at this point in time and for the next room that we make I'll do something a little bit quicker and so I'm just going around and adding I'm looking through these packages here I have the HU walls open now I'm gonna go back up to ASC floors I'm gonna add the rock texture to the top and I'm gonna play I don't think lightning needs to be rebuilt so I'll rebuild that mm-hmm <laughs> Collecting the scene. Now, by default, the UDK does not really come with a bunch of stuff. I mean, the UDK is basically for you to make your own games, and they want you to import your own textures and import your own stuff to make your game. Uh, so it's not going to come with a bunch of stuff. If you have the UT3 engine, however, that comes with all the environments and packages that they use inside the game. So now I have this level, and I have a box here, and I have textures on my walls and all that other good stuff 
Now if I select my walls, and I can select more than one wall by holding control and selecting, bam, bam, now I have all my walls selected. Another way, easier way to do that is I can select one wall, right click it, and if I remember correctly, go to select, <laughs> select surfaces, and you can get adjacent walls here. And now I've selected all the walls that way. With the wall selected, if I hit F5, it'll bring up my surface properties window. And basically what I can do in here is I can go up to the scaling and select that. And I can go down to like one. I think it's a one by default, but we can go up to two. And I can apply that. And you can see how it changed. It scaled the texture up. And if I go down, back down to one and I apply, it basically, how many times it's going to repeat on this wall. If I go up to eight, it's really big. Um, I can go down to... 0.25 and apply that now it's repeating a lot I usually I think the, def, the good one I think is either four or two it's two it is two for walls and stuff like that I like to use two because I don't like it to be repeating a lot but some people do like it to repeat so I mean it's all about preference of your your own preference so uh, I deselected my walls yeah select the walls select the walls so I'll go back over to one and I'll apply that. And you can kind of see this. The reason why I don't like doing it is some of these te textures aren't seamless. So you can see a seam here where the two textures meet because they weren't made to be seamless. That's why I like using the select surfaces, adjacent walls. That's why I like using it when it's as one wall texture as it was kind of meant to be used. Um, you can also move these textures around on the walls themselves by using the pan and you can hit one and you can kind of see it kind of sliding around that way or I can move it by fours or sixteens or sixty fours um, uh, to basically move your texture around as you want so now that I have a room with my textures on it and I'm good to go we can add another room and or, or we can go to our content browser and let's add a static mesh because static meshes are fun so I'm going to deselect materials here and basically what this does is it it looks for certain things. You can either look at everything within the package. Right now I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at textures and materials and static meshes and it can be kind of hard to find things. So this kind of like sorts through all the BS. Um, so I can look straight for static meshes or just for textures or um, static meshes and textures and materials. You know? But uh, this just kind of sorts things out. So I'm right now I'm going to look at static meshes and this has that little thing in there. Nothing in there. Deco usually has some a kind of static, a static mesh in it. Deco stands for decorative. So we can go through here and look for something to put in to our thing here. So you can see there's not a lot of stuff. I mean this game is, I'll show you guys how to make your own stuff and import it in, but for now we're just going to kind of use this stuff here. So I got the static mesh here. Uh, it's just from HU Deco, it's called HU Deco SM um, Concrete Base. So I'll right click the floor somewhere in here and I'll go to Add Actor. Let me make sure I have this all selected. Add Actor. And I should see, oh, I think I gotta fully load this. Let me right click and fully load. Now let me try. Select the static mesh, Add Actor, and Add Static Mesh at the very top. You can see it's extremely extremely big so let me delete that and try to pick it maybe something that might be smaller here um, we'll go with this little kind of light add actor add static mesh but what I was doing there is it wasn't letting me add the static mesh in there as I wanted it didn't give me these options so what I had to do is I had to go to the package I had to right click the package and go to fully load it fully loads the package so it has all the stuff this is a little big for what I want so I'm going to show you how to scale it down and I can do that by going over here to the draw scale and for here you have X Y Z and then a uniform at the very beginning and I'll just go 0.5 which basically cut it in half now let's talk about rotating this thing and getting it moving it and putting it in position if I hit the space bar it'll let me allow me to rotate this I'm gonna rotate it in the Y and then I'll hit space bar again twice to get back up to my moving widget and we'll move this up. It looks like it's pretty good with the ceiling there, but I'm going to go to my top view with the brush wireframe. I want this to be right in the middle. And boom. Now the thing you have to understand about static meshes and lights is that 
they, for the most part, they really don't emit any light. I mean, they look like they do, and it's all shiny, and it looks like it's emitting light, but it really isn't. So to make it really emit light, let me see if I can even go into this. Oh, I can't. Okay, we'll go into it next time. But uh, that's how you add static meshes and add textures to your objects, guys. Um, I'll go into uh, actually making it emit light here in a minute. Uh, this is Nick Stock with Demonic Procedures. Thanks for watching. Just remember, the demon's inside.